Yashar, Jasher, nine, and Haran, the son of Tarach, Avram's oldest brother, took a woman in those days. Haran was thirty-nine years old when he took her. And the woman of Haran conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Lot. And she conceived again and bore a daughter, and she called her name Milcah. And she again conceived and bore a daughter, and she called her name Sarai. Haran was forty-two years old when he begat Sarai, which was in the tenth year of the life of Avram. And in those days Avram and his mother and nurse went out from the cave, as the king and his subjects had forgotten the affair of Avram. And when Avram came out from the cave, he went to Noach and his son Shem, and he remained with them to learn the instruction of Yahuwah and his ways. And no man knew where Avram was. And Avram served Noach and Shem, his son, for a long time. And Avram was in Noach's house thirty-nine years. And Avram knew Yahuwah from three years old. And he went in the ways of Yahuwah until the day of his death, as Noach and his son Shem had taught him. And all the sons of the earth in those days greatly transgressed against Yahuwah, and they rebelled against him, and they served other Elohim, and they forgot Yahuwah, who had created them in the earth, and the inhabitants of the earth made unto themselves at that time every man his Elohim, Elohim of wood and stone, which could neither speak, hear, nor deliver. And the sons of men served them, and they became their Elohim. And the king and all his servants, and Tarach with all his household, were then the first of those that served Elohim of wood and stone. And Tarach had twelve Elohim of large size, made of wood and stone, after the twelve months of the year. And he served each one monthly, and every month Tarach would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his Elohim. Thus did Tarach all the days. And all that generation were wicked in the sight of Yahuwah, and they thus made every man his Elohim. But they forsook Yahuwah, who had created them. And there was not a man found in those days in the whole earth who knew Yahuwah, for they served each man his own Elohim, except Noah and his household, and all those who were under his counsel knew Yahuwah in those days. And Avram, the son of Tarach, was waxing great in those days in the house of Noah, and no man knew it, and Yahuwah was with him. And Yahuwah gave Avram an understanding heart, and he knew all the works of that generation were in vain, and that all their Elohim were vain and were of no avail. And Avram saw the sun shining upon the earth. And Avram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is Elohim, and him will I serve. And Avram served the sun in that day, and he prayed to him. And when evening came, the sun set as usual. And Avram said within himself, Surely this cannot be Elohim. And Avram still continued to speak within himself, Who is he who made the heavens and the earth? Who created upon earth? Where is he? And night darkened over him, 
and he lifted up his eyes toward the west, north, south, and east, and he saw that the sun had vanished from the earth, and the day became dark. And Avram saw the stars and moon before him, and he said, Surely this is the Elohim who created the whole earth, as well as man. And behold, these his servants are Elohim around him. And Avram served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning, when it was light, and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Avram saw all the things that Yahweh Elohim had made upon earth. And Avram said unto himself, Surely these are not Elohim that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of Elohim. And Avram remained in the house of Noach, and there knew Yahweh and his ways, and he served Yahweh all the days of his life. And all that generation forgot Yahweh and served other Elohim of wood and stone and rebelled all their days. And King Nimrod reigned securely and all the earth was under his control and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together, put Mitzrayim, Cush, and Canaan with their families. And they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven. And we will make ourselves famed, so that we may reign upon the whole world, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And they all went before the king, and they told the king these words. And the king agreed with them in this affair, and he did so. And all the families assembled, consisting of about 600,000 men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower. And they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley at the east of the land of Shinar, about two days' walk. And they journeyed there, and they dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had, imag had imagined to complete. And the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it. And while they were building against Yahweh Elohim of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. And all these people and all the families divided themselves into three parts rather in three parts. The first said, We will ascend into heaven and fight against him. The second said, We will ascend to heaven and place our own Elohim there and serve them. And the third part said, We will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. And Elohim knew all their works and all their evil thoughts. And he saw the city and the tower which they were building. And when they were building, they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower. And on account of its height, the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders in their ascent to it until those who went up had completed a full year. And after that, they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and the bricks. Thus was it done daily. And behold, these ascended and others descended the whole day, 
and if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it. And if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. And Yahweh knew their thoughts. And it came to pass, when they were building, they cast the arrows toward the heavens. And all the arrows fell upon them, filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. For this was from Yahweh, in order to cause them to err, and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. And they built the tower and the city, and they did this thing daily, until many days and years were lapsed. And Elohim said to the seventy angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. And from that day following, they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue, and they could not understand to speak in one tongue. And when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone which he did not order, the builder would cast it away and throw it upon his neighbor that he would die. And they did so many days, and they killed many of them in this manner. And Yahweh smote the three divisions that were there, and he punished them according to their works and designs. Those who said, We will ascend to heaven and serve our Elohim, became like apes and elephants. And those who said, We will smite the heaven with arrows, Yahweh killed them, one man through the hand of his neighbor. And the, the third division of those who said, We will ascend to heaven and fight against him, Yahweh scattered them throughout the earth. And those who were left amongst them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, they forsook the building, and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth. And they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore he called that place Babel, for there Yahweh confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. And as to the tower which the sons of men built, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up one third part thereof. And a fire also descended from heaven and burned another third. And the other third is left to this day. And it is of that part which was aloft, and its circumference is three days' walk. And many of the sons of men died in that tower, a people without number.